Ah, the Xbox One. Microsoft's big idea to revolutionize multimedia gaming. What we got instead was a masterclass in how not to build a game console. Let's dig into this epic blunder. So Microsoft was feeling pretty smug with the 360's success. It wasn't just about games, the 360 was a streaming beast, streaming Netflix before that consumed our entire lives. Microsoft took that success a little bit too seriously. The next-gen Xbox was pitched as a multimedia monster. Well, spoiler alert, it tripped at the starting line while the PlayStation 4 sprinted ahead. Microsoft's messaging has always been like trying to follow a GPS that recalculates every couple of minutes. But the Xbox One reveal? Oh my god, that was a whole new level of chaos. Instead of talking about video games, we got fantasy football. But let's skip that mess for now and dive right into the turd sandwich that is the Xbox One's engineering. From the start, Xbox One was designed to be a multimedia monster. We're talking about a machine so focused on streaming that it probably should have been called the Netflix box. It even had an HDMI import for that sweet, sweet cable box integration that six people in the world actually used. But here's where that dream starts to crumble. Designing computer tech like a game console is sort of like baking a souffle. Balance is everything. And Microsoft? They kind of dropped the whole dish on the floor and pissed on the wreckage. They were obsessed with making app switching seamless and games to streaming to cable, all of it quick. This ambition was hungry for RAM. Lots of it. 8 gigabytes to be exact. Enter the dilemma. Keeping costs down while stuffing a console with 8 gigabytes of RAM. The industry was leaning towards graphics double data rate 5 or GDDR5 RAM, the Ferrari of memory back then. But hey, Ferraris aren't cheap, and Microsoft wasn't really feeling adventurous with their budget. So they went with the slower, cheaper DDR3 memory. Yes, it did the job, but it's sort of like being a marathon runner on a diet of Twinkies. Technically, you can do it, but you're not going to win any races. To patch up this decision, they slapped 32 megabytes of static RAM right onto the processor. Think of it as a tiny, speedy bandage over a giant, slow wound. But wait, there's more. This SRAM fix had to cost something and it ate into the space that would have been used for better graphics hardware. Microsoft was stuck in a tech tug of war with themselves and they refused to let go of their streaming dream. Just when Microsoft thought they had their bases covered, enter Sony with the PlayStation 4. Sony's console could stream, but it didn't jerk itself off to the Hulu's garbage catalog of originals. Sony opted for four gigabytes of that pricey GDDR5 memory into their console focusing on raw gaming power. But then, market pulled a fast one. The price of GDDR5 dropped. Sony, sensing an opportunity, doubled the amount of memory from 4 to 8 gigabytes of that speedy GDDR5. This left the PlayStation 4 with not just more memory than before, equal to the Xbox One, but it was faster and it had better gaming graphics hardware, all without the costly SRAM shenanigans. Meanwhile, the memory controller in the Xbox One was designed for DDR3, and it couldn't be changed so late in development. The Xbox One was stuck with its DDR3. Then there was the Kinect. The Kinect is like an unwanted guest, sort of like that drunk uncle that won't leave after the holidays are over with. And just like that drunk uncle, it's constantly asking for an extra $100. Trying to close the performance gap, Microsoft cranked up the Xbox One's processor speed, a desperate move akin to slapping a band-aid on the decapitation. Ultimately, Microsoft had to face the music and release the Xbox One X, a tacked admission that the previous console was a bit of a dud. Reminds you a bit of Sega, doesn't it? Hey, our last console was kinda shit, but buy this new one! Cause you know, that strategy always works out so well. 